Alright guys, today I do not have a walk and talk for this video, but what I do want to do, I want to show you something. So we are at my HQ and um, I want to share something with you guys. So anyone that's been on my channel, you've seen the door, it's Believe Achieves, it's kind of dirty. But this is the other side of my office. This is the other side of the HQ, okay? And um, it's the reason why I want to share a story. Okay? So, uh, ah, okay, there we go. So, if you see, right, check it out. So, how I had this set up is I had this, this side is the offices and also inventory and the other side as a content space where we create content. So we will have people, you know, we have uh, somebody working here, somebody working here, um, do all of the shipping out front. Because when I came here, this started as As a clothing brand, All Dream started as a clothing brand that told stories of young athletes and we made shirts inspired by their dreams and the proceeds would go to, the, to help them in their training and the things that they need, travel for athletics and things like that. And that's what All Dreams was. And basically supporting dreams and through these different collections of shirts. This is National Champions Collection, All Dreams Basketball. This was Win the Race, All Dreams Tennis Club. So a bunch of different collections that actually, look, you can look at some of the collections right here. I love Dreams. Of course, the Palenque Collection. Dream Girl Collection. Socks. A lot of different, and there was so much more designs that I did. And... The problem was we didn't get enough traction and sales for the clothing company to become a business. However, I knew it was something that was there because it was the fact of support, people could support an athlete by making a purchase because they watched the athlete's story, okay? The athlete's story was very, very important because, excuse me, the athlete, the people got engaged with the athlete through the athlete's story, okay? So I knew it was something there. Maybe this wasn't a clothing line and how could you, and then I got, you know, once I got to a, another point, I said, how can we scale if we have a million athletes and our dream is to support a million athletes, how can we scale that and have a million different collections of clothing? It would be impossible. And how can we, we is, no, our, my goal was to support one million dreamers. I'm like, it's no way that we can actually do that with this system in place. And that's how I got to 
making a sports technology company where it was story of an athlete because all of these athletes that I was engaging with was parents were sending me videos of what was happening with the kid. Sending me videos of their games, sending me videos of them practicing, sending me videos and all of these videos. So where would these videos go? And that's how I created the Dreamers Vault. Ultimately, that's how I started to create a sports technology company because for one, kids had stories, a sports story, and they needed a place to capture that journey instead of just sitting on their phone, you know, sitting on in the camera roll, but also athletes needed support for training and for fees and travel and things like that. And that's how I started this, my sports technology company through that. And the lesson in all of this is that I was gun ho on this brand. And I promise you, this is some of, this is just some of the, the merchandise that's that's left like i must have gave away thousands of dollars in merchandise and this is just what's left and this has been here sitting for eight months so i could have packed it in i could have packed it in i could have said i lost 10 grand ten thousand dollars on all of this this stuff you know all of this inventory of course this place still has to be paid for I could have quit but instead of quitting what I did is I made a pivot because I believed in what I was doing for one and it was just another way to do it. And the lesson in that is sometimes you have to see when you have to, sometimes you have to see where you have something, but it does need a little bit of tweak and it can become something else. And you can't be scared to pivot. And you can't be scared to take a loss in business. This is still, this is still a money pit. This is still a loss. We still don't have the technology, that, that, the application where we're making revenue. But I know that it's a problem that we're solving. And again, it always goes, circles back to solving a problem. And what do we do with this side of the office? I don't know. You know, I, I don't. I don't know. I don't spend much time over here. Look, we have three, three other microphones on this side. We have inventory. <laughs> uh, I don't come here because I spend most of my time on the other side. But listen. When you do, if you're going to start a business, know that the business that you're going to start is probably not going to be the business you're going to end with. <laughs> it's just that serious. Like your initial idea, the initial business probably is not going to be the ending business. And don't be scared to pivot. Don't be scared to take losses and don't be scared to continue to believe. So that's the video today. I just wanted to show you guys that look we had all of these boxes and not you know not to mention like this room this this closet right here it's a lot of stuff in there i wouldn't even show you but um look this is our table where we you know fulfill the orders at 
But it also, I, I didn't prepare for, for shipping to the United States from Colombia either, you know? So that, that also was a problem. You know, we would never make money shipping, making clothes here, and then shipping from Colombia to the United States. Impossible, right? So a clothing brand would have never worked. A platform that tells a story of, of athletes, builds a community, and helps them earn money, now that will be a really great company. All right, guys. I'm out, man. I'll see you guys tomorrow.